guys, welcome to another tutorial of Choose Some Tech Videos. In this tutorial, I'm going to start with a series of new tutorials I'm going to be doing, um, and I'm going to start on how to set up a Linux web server. These new uh, tutorials are going to add up on each other. So, uh, first we're going to start to set up a web server on Linux. Um, after that, we're going to install WordPress. <laughs> And uh, finally, we're going to install a web server cluster. Maybe in between, I'm gonna also going to explain how to um, um, put a web radio on your WordPress website. But that's probably going to be uh, on another uh, tutorial. Um, and all of these separate lines are different uh, series of tutorials. First of all, I'm going to start with how to set up a Linux web server. Um, some things I'm going to talk about is why would you choose for your own Linux server um, instead of a web hosting account with a control panel, etc. Uh, I'm also going to talk about how to set up a virtual machine on DigitalOcean. You can use anything you want, any hosting provider you want. I'm going to use DigitalOcean because I like it, but you could also choose, uh, choose something else like uh, AWS. After, that, we, after we've set up the virtual machine, we're going to check um, the, the basic hardening, so some basic security features on our Linux machine, just to improve the security a bit better. And lastly, we're going to install dependencies for the WordPress website we're going to set up in the next series of tutorials. So let's start with why would you set up a Linux VPS? Now, a VPS is... Um, the short term of virtual private server. Now with a virtual private server, you've got all the power you want, you need, and you get. So I have to tell you that I also started with web hosting companies that just provided me a control panel where I could set up my WordPress website or, or HTML website or anything like that, and it was all fine. But after a while, um, I wanted to get more power, I wanted to do more, I wanted to learn more, um, and it just dif didn't give me enough power. Uh, sometimes you even have to had to pay to, 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 to do more, to, for example, set up your own um, DNS records or, or, or back up your, your website or anything like that. That was in the early days, but sometimes I even had to let you pay more for more power. Now, the second thing is you're gonna learn a new skill possibly. If you already know Linux, then this is probably just gonna be really easy for you. It's the basic of how to set up a web server. Um, but if you really wanna get into Linux, then this is a great start for the basics of Linux and a web server. Now, what I like about a VPS the most is that it's fast, it's not shared, and it's expandable as you wish. So what I mean with that is that it's really fast because you can set up um, the server and configure the server anyhow you like. So you can s use Apache instead of Nginx or you could use MySQL or, or Postgres or anything you like. Um, but you can you can make it as fast as possible. So that's, that's one thing I like. Um, and it's not shared. So when you go to a web hoster, most of the time you share a virtual machine, so a web server with other people. Say, for example, we've got one web server on the one web server, probably a dedicated server. There are hundreds of websites shared. Um, most of the time there are limitations to what each website could use um, as resource based, but it's still shared. Um, and you still got a limited amount of resources you can use. And as I said, it's expandable as you wish. Like I said in the first slide, um, we're also going to set up and look into a web server cluster. So high availability, uh, multiple nodes inside of your cluster. Um, so it basically means you can expand your web server any how you like. Um, because you could just do, you could just set up anything you like. Now, the cons of having your own Linux VPS, and I don't really find this really a negative con, but um, some people will, uh, you need to manage the server yourself. So that means you're going to lose some time um, 
yes it takes time to learn Linux, yes it takes time to set up your own systems, uh, to configure it, to fix your own mistakes, maybe sometimes you have made a configuration, suddenly the web server or your website is down, um, you need to fix all of that yourself. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that can happen. Um, but that's also like a positive thing, it's just that the way you want to see it. Let me just quickly show you something first. So in the first um, slide I showed you we're going to set up a uh, WordPress, uh, well a uh, WordPress website and we're going to set up a web server cluster. Now let me quickly just show you what I've done here. Um, these are two servers I've set up. They're cluster based, so they're uh, hooked up together. And as you check over here, this is the WordPress website I've set up. So this is a, a simple WordPress website. I haven't done anything with it, but this basically gets load balanced over the two servers I set up. So if I refresh these, let me check, there we go. As you can see, I just keep refreshing this page and each website gets a request. Um, it, it just gets loads balanced. So the requests get load balanced over the separate servers. Um, I've set up a monitor uh, so you can actually like check the web servers, how many disk usage it's using, how many CPU usage. Um, you can get alerts, anything like that. If you find this interesting, then just keep on following my channel, um, subscribe to it, and possibly I'm going to make this tutorial really soon about how to set up your own web server cluster. So, um, as I said, um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create or log in if you've already got an account. Um, but we're going to create a DigitalOcean account. Now, let me show you. I've already got a DigitalOcean account. Um, and in the description of this video, I will give you a referral link. In this referral link, if you create an account with that link, it will uh, give you uh, a free 10 dollars and with that free ten dollars you can set up your own VPS for two months um, so you've got a completely set up web server completely free for two months so if you haven't got a DigitalOcean account yet sign up at digitalocean.com using my link down below in the description so the first thing we are gonna do is we're gonna create uh, we're gonna create a droplet so quickly what DigitalOcean uh, introduced recently are the projects. Now on the left you see all kind of tabs. Um, first you've got your project, second you've got all the products they provide, and last but not least you've got your account things. Now project is basically just a way of organizing different kind of servers. So if you have a lot of servers, as you can see in my HA cluster, this is the uh, high availability cluster I set up the primary secondary web server we've got the database cluster monitor like I showed you this one um, and we've got a load balancer that basically just load balanced system requests so let's first create a droplet and uh, droplet uh, is basically just a VPS digital ocean calls on droplets now the first thing you see is you've got multiple distributions so we're gonna complete this whole thing but the first thing you see is you need to choose an image now, an image is basically just the kernel that the system will be running now you've got Ubuntu, FreeBSD, Fedora, Debian and CentOS now I would like to use Debian um, but you could also use any other distribution uh, as you wish Ubuntu and Debian they look like very much however if you're going to choose for FreeBSD, Fedora or CentOS it's going to be completely different so you will probably have to um, watch another tutorial about these kind of uh, operating systems so I'm going to choose Debian you've got multiple versions I'll go for the latest one uh, the latest one basically just got all the new fixes and security uh, features etc uh, I'll choose the size, the smallest one, the one gigabyte one. Now, if you have uh, created an account with my referral link, you can run this first cheap one for two months or this $10 one a month for one month. Completely free. Now, let's use the smallest one. Scroll down. You can see you can also add backups. I won't do that. 
Um, this is basically a system level backup, so it's a backup of the whole image, the whole VPS, none file backups. So you this won't backup separate. I'm sorry, separate files or anything. This will backup the whole system. Um, if you want more storage, you can use block storage. Not going to use it as well, and. I'm going to use the data center that's nearest to me. Now, if you want to host a website or anything um, to your clients that are based in Toronto, then it's not going to be a great idea to set up your web server at Amsterdam because the latency is just going to be bigger and why not be faster uh, if you choose the Toronto. Now, some Additional options we could choose are private networking, IP version 6, user data and monitoring. Um, for the sake of later tutorials I'm going to do, so for example the cluster we're going to set up, I'm going to already select private networking. Now this is free, um, so if you want to set up a cluster or if you want to set up anything um, with where the droplets need to communicate with each other, then this is a great feature to use. Now I'm not going to need version 6 IP, not going to set up user data, I'm not going to um, use monitoring for this one. Um, and right now I'm not going to choose an SSH key, because just for this tutorial I want to explain to you how you connect to your droplet for the first time, if you don't have an SSH key already, etc. etc. Um, if you already got an SSH key, then you should probably select one of these. Uh, we'll do. We'll, we'll we'll look at that later on. Now I'm gonna call this web server one, and I'll just select the default project over here. Let's create it, and after a most of the time, like 60 seconds or so, you get an email with the um, new droplet details into it. All right. So as you can see, I got the email. It basically says uh, my droplet name got started, new IP address over here, username and passwords. Now, um, to log in to our server, we need to have a client. I like to use um, WinSCP for file transfers and the Putty SSH client. Um, first thing we're going to look at is Putty. You can just search Putty. In Google, you will get to the download page and you can just select the uh, 64 or 32 bit, whatever computer you've got, installer image, and it will, put the, it will install Putty for you. Now, once you've installed Putty, we need to run Putty, we need to copy the IP, paste it in there, port 22 is fine, and it will now ask our uh, if, like our computer, if it's fine that we connect to this new server, um, it's not cached in the registry yet, etc. So I just press yes, and it will ask us for um, our roots, uh, what kind of user we want to log, in, log into. We're going to use roots and our password. We're just going to copy it from the email we've got, and now right click, so right mouse click inside of the PuTTY terminal only once you won't see anything because it's uh, it's blacked out but if you um, right click your mouse it will pass anything you've got copied inside of the terminal um, so now uh, we locked into our terminal over here we put the current password once more again and now it asks us for a new password so let's give it a new Pass it over here and we're done, we're logged in with SSH into our terminal. Alright, so what we've done, we've looked into the, um, the terminal, we have uh, checked your email, locked in for the first time, and we've changed the passwords. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an SSH key. We're going to change the default port of the SSH service and we're going to install Archi Hunter. Uh, we'll be doing this in the next part of this tutorial, so I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.